Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on White Coats and Corgis. Today I'm going to be showing you a clip from the Pre-Med Experience, which is a live virtual event that I put together for pre-meds to learn all about the admissions process, the MCAT, how to get their extracurriculars, and all things like that. I was so, so lucky to get three amazing medical school deans to volunteer to participate in the event. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, hey everyone, and thanks so much for joining. Uh, my name's Dan, and I am a second year internal medicine resident, and I'll be the moderator for this panel. Um, we're joined by three incredible um, deans and admissions experts here, and um, I wanna give everyone the chance to ask questions in that Q&A, um, and I'll be looking through that. Um, but first, I was hoping that the deans could introduce themselves. We can go one by one and just quickly sort of say where you're from and, and what your role is. So if we can start with Dr. Osborne. Um, hello, I'm Megan Boysen Osborne. I am the Associate Dean for Students. So I oversee admissions, student affairs, and diversity, equity, and inclusion at University of California, Irvine. Awesome. Dr. Liotta. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. And uh, I'm Rob Liotta, and I'm the Associate Dean for Admissions and Recruitment at the Uniform Services University, uh, the Health Sciences. And we're actually on the Walter Reed uh, Bethesda Medical Campus, National Naval Medical Center, Bethesda. So, um, and I'm great to be here with you today. And Dr. Amiri. Hi everyone, I'm Layla Amiri. I'm the Associate Dean for Admissions at the Robert Larner College of Medicine at the University of Vermont. Awesome, awesome. And so, you know, when applying, a lot of things are in a way like, about numbers. So Dr. Leota, question for you about numbers here. People think sometimes I need X amount of hours of something, right? Do you sort of subscribe to that notion? Or do you say, you know, if you shadow a little bit and, and you see that you enjoy medicine, that's enough? Or do you look for a certain amount of hours of shadowing or clinical work or volunteering, things of that nature? Great question. And so we don't have an exact numbers and I don't know many, you know, it, it's going to be a, unique to that application. However, I do like to give numbers to you guys just because I think, um, you know, if you think 90 is enough or 30 is enough, it's really what you, how you describe that. But, um, but I do think it doesn't hurt you to have good numbers in those areas. And so, um, and so I think a good ballpark is, you definitely want to be over 100 hours, I think. Um, and if you have over 300 hours, I think that's a great amount, especially if it's over several years, right? Um, say you've been working as a freshman all the way through your junior year, or, or you've done a great gap year where you've been working full time um, with it, you're going to have numbers like that. Um, now, does that mean you have to have 300? No. Could you get in with 90? You might, you know, if you if, if, if the experiences you've had and the different things you've had. Um, so I do think it's worth... Um, that's why I give them out. And so, you know, and general gestalted areas, I think even on a holistic review, we look at, we will look at, hey, that's a lot of clinical experience. I mean, to see someone that's been in EMT all through college and they have a thousand hours, it's just impressive, you know? And so it speaks, it's, do you need that? Not everyone needs that, but it will enhance your application. And I think the way to look at it would be mostly like, are you doing what your passion is? Do you, are you enjoying it? And if you've been committed to it for a, a period of time over a year or, or long, it's you're going to have automatically have big numbers there. Um, and that's going to then translate to your, your descriptions of that experience, your recommendations from that experience, and your overall um, idea about what medicine entails uh, with it. So, um, so yeah, that, that, I think that that sort of answers it, you know, with it. And the same thing with, you know, your service uh, or your other, your outside activities. Yeah. Is there an exact number? No. And in fact, and some people ask me, do I need a lot? And I'm like, you could have one activity. And if you've been doing that and been doing so much with that all through high school or college and uh, or afterwards, that can be a very powerful experience. And so um, and so it doesn't uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a lot or a big number with that. I appreciate that. Do, Dr. Amir, do you have any comments on that as well? Just because I know it's such a point of stress and anxiety for applicants who yeah. feel like they may not have enough and they start comparing to other applicants. You know, so I'm going to agree 100% completely with everything that Dr. Leota said, because we, you know, it's, it's weird to have set hours for things because it ignores the context of the application. And that's the lived experience of the student, right? So if you, a person has to work 30 hours a week as an undergrad for food and shelter, clearly they're gonna have less things on their application. Um, and 
it's up to the school if they're going to take that into consideration or not. And if they don't, you know what? That school just does not deserve that student. That's all I have to say, right? Because if I can't take into consideration that you've had to work 30 hours a week to have food and shelter, and I'm all hung up on the fact that you don't have 127 hours of something, you probably don't want to be to, you don't want to go to school there. So I would say do the best to accrue the number of hours that make sense um, in the life that you currently have and enough to be able to speak intelligently about something, right? So if I see that you only have, I'm going to pick something intentionally off just for it to stay, right? If you only have 10 hours of clinical experience and your whole essay is about what the characteristics of a good physician are, there's a disconnect there, right? So the application doesn't make sense. So I think it's important for you to have, you know, as much as you can, clinical exposure and clinical experience in whatever way that may be. If it's possible for you to be paid to get that clinical experience, that's fine. It won't count as volunteering, and that's okay too, because we'll see, you know, we'll see the two. And um, agreeing with what Dr. Leota said about a particular one experience, that, you know, I'm a civilian medical school, obviously, but when we get military applicants, they don't have a lot of things, but they have thousands of hours of service at the highest level of service that an individual can provide. And so that's leadership, that's service, you know, that's everything combined together. And so for that particular application, I'm really only looking for medical understanding. And oftentimes they happen to be a military medic as well. And then that's all wrapped into one. So sometimes those applications only have three things on them, but it's, you know, 15,000 hours of something. So really don't shortchange yourself on and don't shortchange us. I mean, we want the students that fit our programs. And so we're going to take the context of you as an applicant into consideration. Um, so it's, you know, 750 hours better than 200. Sometimes it might be, and sometimes it may not, because if your 750 hours was you just going in there, you know, robotically and doing stuff and you haven't thought about it too much, it may not be that helpful. Um, we want holistic. We want holistic. We want exposure to the field. And, you know, in various ways that you're able to share that with us is, is what we will value.